Mom really does know best. A National Science Foundation-funded University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign study finds that teens behind the wheel are less likely to take the risk of running a yellow light when mom is in the car. 14-year-old subjects completed a simulated driving task while researchers tracked blood flow in their brains. In one trial, the teen driver was alone. In another, the teen's mother was present and watching. The team observed that teens driving alone found risky decisions rewarding. Blood flow to the ventral striatum, a reward center in the brain, increased significantly when teen drivers chose to ignore a yellow stoplight and proceed through the intersection. A mother's presence killed the thrill of running the light, resulting in more responsible behavior. The teens on average across the sample went from about 55% risky choices when alone to about 45% when mom was watching. The team says the study shows that a parent's presence is actually changing the way the teen reasons and thinks about risk, ultimately increasing safe behavior. This is Harmony, a first-of-its-kind two-armed robotic rehabilitation exoskeleton developed by researchers at the Cockrell School of Engineering at the University of Texas at Austin. This robot is designed to deliver physical therapy to those suffering from a neurological disorder such as a stroke or a spinal cord injury. The National Science Foundation funded team designed Harmony to deliver full upper body therapy by moving patients through their full range of natural motion. The team believes the exoskeleton could reduce a patient's recovery time and can be customized to the individual's therapy needs. Harmony's sensors and software give therapists and doctors the ability to deliver precise therapy while tracking and analyzing data. With Harmony now complete, the team continues to develop the software and prepare for upcoming trials. Researchers at Oregon State University have invented a new technology that can increase Wi-Fi bandwidth tenfold, reducing bandwidth problems in crowded airports, offices, and coffee shops. The prototype called WIFO uses LED lights to create an invisible cone of light in which data can be received. The National Science Foundation funded team created a hybrid system that can switch between several LED transmitters installed on a ceiling and an existing Wi-Fi system. And if the user in that a particular light cone, it will receive the information. When the user move out of the light cone, the Wi-Fi system will automatically take over. And when the user move into another light cone, the system will automatically know that the user is in that light cone and will transmit the right information to that user. The system can potentially send data up to 100 megabytes per second to each individual user, unlike current Wi-Fi systems that divide the bandwidth between users. The team feels this new approach successfully eliminates streaming stalls and allows WIFO to be cheaply and easily integrated into current Wi-Fi systems. Sleep apnea is a disease that affects more than 25 million Americans. Left untreated can lead to high blood pressure, stroke, heart problems, and diabetes. Current testing for the disease requires a person to wear a tangle of wires and can be costly and often requires sleeping overnight in a strange hospital bed. That's why researchers at the University of Washington have developed Apnea App a smartphone app that wirelessly tracks changes in a person's breathing movements. To detect the telltale pauses in breathing, the smartphone speaker sends out inaudible sound waves, which bounce off a sleeping person's body and are picked up by the phone's microphone. The thing about it is most people that have it don't know that they have it. Apnea app is something that a person can use on their phone, in their home sleeping environment, that can give them an indication as to whether or not they may be stopping breathing in their sleep. The team tested the app on 37 patients undergoing sleep apnea studies at a hospital sleep clinic. Researchers put a Samsung Galaxy S4 on a corner of the bed. During nearly 300 hours of testing, the app tracked respiratory events, including central apnea, obstructive apnea, and hypoapnea with 95 to 99 percent accuracy. Tests in a home bedroom showed Apnea App works efficiently at distances of up to three feet in any sleeping position, even when a person is under blankets. By providing a convenient, wireless, non-invasive way for the average person to test at home over the course of several nights or weeks, the team feels the Apnea App could provide a more complete picture of real-life sleeping patterns and lead to treatment. Apnea App is still in the developmental stages at the moment, but we do believe that Apnea App has a lot of potential. 
we feel that a very simple way for people to indicate whether or not they have sleep apnea in their home sleeping environment has tremendous potential to help people live happier, healthier lives. For more information about these stories, visit us at NSF.gov. This is NSF Science Now. I'm Dina Headley.